our next presenters astrid rao and anushree chitnis will be talking on experiencing evolving ecology at native place astrid rao owns and nurtures native place an ecologically designed guest house and garden at kamshet near pune she has 16 years of experience growing a garden and observing and deeply studying trees she was born in mumbai and traces her ancestry to the tribal population of pre colonial india she lived an idyllic existence in childhood and decided to recreate it through native place when the city swallowed her sylvan village hi everybody i am astrid rao as i have already been introduced i own and run the native place guest house and garden and india's para- pioneering paragliding school nirvana adventures along with my husband sanjay rao i'm here to tell you the story of how we transformed a bare parcel of land on which we built the native place guest house into a verdant ecological landscape We bought the land in the late 90s an acre plus in size that sloped towards and overlooked a pristine water body in Kamshet The land was mostly bare with wild grasses and thorny scrub like karwanda lantana etc It was being grazed by cattle and lopped for firewood by the local people I got to hear that earlier there were lots of mahua, mango, ain and other monsoon forest trees growing on this land. In 1999, once we had the basic infrastructure like oops. Sorry. Yeah. So in 1999, once we had the basic infrastructure like water and fencing in place, we planted some fruit trees i was in a big hurry to grow fruit trees because i wanted my children to be able to climb them and pluck the fruit we planted mango chiku drumstick cashew jackfruit all the trees of my childhood in the southwest corner of the property at the bottom of the slope my inspiration and vision for the garden came from the sustainable hope gardens of peninsula india that grew their own food medicine puja flowers firewood etc as well as my childhood experiences of living in an east indian village in mumbai i did not vision a spick and span garden but a wild one where children would run barefoot chase butterflies and connect to to, to the land and nature like i had done as a child my architect suchitra sholapurkar asked for a detailed contour plan and marked the and to mark the existing trees the native trees on the property had been cut down by previous owners and had begun to re-sprout they looked like shrubs to my untrained eye we identified the trees and decided to hold space for them to grow and regain their splendor she decided to build a house on the topmost part of the property you can see in the okay i'm not so good with these thingies so we started building in 2002 a bawaesque house with a central courtyard and many levels guided by the slope of the land the house hugged the earth and had many landings verandas lookouts and terraces that connected the inside and the outside soon it was time to green the area around the guest house and i also realized at this point that all the glossy gardening books that i had invested in were not going to be of any help we had not kept any budget for landscaping either and my growing my job of growing the garden was looking rather tricky So we began working with cuttings from waste thrown by the few bungalow owners after pruning their plants bougainvillea lantana etc and then i got on to growing local native shrubs like nirgudi adulsa clerodendron dhaiti jatropha vishnukranta etc these became important parts of my plant palette and they as they were not browsed by cattle 
They flowered a lot, attracted pollinators, and provided medicine and firewood too. They were also hardy plants that would, not, that would survive with minimal inputs. I didn't have a gardener. This opened a whole new and exciting world of plants and their uses for me. Inspired by the architecture of the house, we did not flatten the land, but decided to preserve and work with the contours of the land. We did not go about landscaping the property at one go, but we went one small area at a time. We also built a new seat, a new hangout area for a group, pathways, and stairs to create meaningful breakout areas and link one area of the garden to another. All the pathways became opportunities to plant interesting plants and further added to the biodiversity. In the next five to eight years, the native trees began to flourish. Jamun, Palash, Red Silk Cotton, Kumbha, Ain, and many more attracting birds, squirrels, insects, bats, etc. These native trees dropped their leaves seasonally, and this seasonal leaf, leaf fall helped to regenerate the garden soil. Next, I turned my attention towards climbers, these fascinating plants that flower within a year. We looked for prolific bloomers, fragrance, color, and character, and planted these on trellises around the house. I researched and collected a bunch of climbers like Madhumalati, Blue J Sky Vine, Jade Vine, Chameli, Clitoria Ternata, Petria Volubis, Firecracker Vine, Alamanda, Clematis, Climbing Rose, and each one of them added to the beauty and the diversity in the garden. Then I moved on to bird and butterfly attractors. I had once noticed a hemelia plant that attra attracted sunbirds all day long, and I realized that it was an easy way to attract birds. I kept looking for more bird and butterfly and insect attractors, and introduced shrub shrubs like snakeweed, calotropus, acestacia, datura, layering the garden with these easy to care for plants that flowered profusely all through the season. I was now arranging the garden to delight the guests and bird song, with birdsong, fragrance, and color. I did the same with fragrant plants and trees, adding chaffa, son chaffa, karanj, kadamba, chameli, clematis, madhumalti, ratrani, etc., layering them and placing them in areas near the guest house or on the paths where people would encounter and enjoy them. Even the little lawn space we have is sl a sloping piece of land with local grass that grows naturally. We only deweed it in the monsoons for certain prolific weeds. Within 10 years, the garden had a character and charm of its own. I had set out to create the surroundings of my childhood and inadvertently grown an ecological garden. We attracted more than 40 species of birds, including visiting hornbills, whistling thrushes, sunbirds, magpie robins, Indian robins, leaf birds, munias, and ioras. The bird song in the garden goes on all day long. The birds bring lots more seeds, adding to the biodiversity. Their poop fertilizes our soil, and they offer us pest control too. Everyone who came by enjoyed the space, even if they did not notice the bird calls or the fragrances all around, they were being soothed by nature. In 2016, I came across, okay, that's everyone, sorry people. In 2016, I came across permaculture. The more, and the more I learned about permaculture, the more I felt that the permaculture principles were written for someone like me. Some of them I had already intuitively adhered to, like growing native species, using the slope of the land, planting trees in the south and western boundaries of the property, growing biomass plants, attracting pollinators, and saying no to chemical fertilizers and, put and pesticides. I now began to retrofit the garden to permaculture principles. Now seed saving, soil restoration, 
Water harvesting and growing food became my new obsessions. I'd like to uh, read out my favorite permaculture definition. It says permaculture noun. Humans living in a way that enriches our natural resources like soil, forest, water, leading to an indefinite or permanent habitation on planet Earth. It's the need of the day today, don't you think? The permaculture design course connected me with a tribe of people who thought ecological, regenerative, functional, and native. I met landscape architect Anushri Chitnis on the course. She proposed to design a nature trail for the native place garden, and this was the beginning of a happy association between us. I had a random style of working, and Anushri was able to bring in technical aspects, as well as guide me on creative and ecological aspects. I collaborated with Anushri on several projects, some we have completed, and some still in the pipeline, like arresting soil erosion, water harvesting, creating a food forest, a nature trail that, that highlighted the biodiversity and sensory aspects of the garden, a tea garden, a dye garden, gray water system, cob oven, etc. I'd like to share details on two of these projects. The food forest we created two years ago. The climax layer of the fruit trees was already growing in the southwest corner. We created swales and trenches to stop the monsoon water from exiting the sloping land and letting it infiltrate into the soil at the root zones of the fruit trees. We filled the trenches with biomass and we grew many functional species to incorporate in the ground layer, the grass layer, the bush layer, the, the large shrub layer, and the small tree layer. We also trained climb, climbers to grow on the tree trunks where possible. We used a number of functional species that gave food, biomass, deterred pests, and attracted pollinators. From lendi pimpli to bush pepper to coffee, noni, mulberry, mayalu, root crops like cassava and arbi. We continue to observe and intervene where necessary, as this is a new system, and we'll watch it till it matures. So this, this is some of the produce of our food forest. Water harvesting. We have a high rainfall, we are in a high rainfall area, and we decided to go next for the water, to water harvest the area, even though we, you know, right ahead of us is a lake. Different areas in the garden called for different strategies. We made terraces using dry stone walls and dumping loads of biomass into them for, and covering them with soil, thus allowing water to infiltrate and be held by the soil easily. The biomass would also decompose slowly and turn into compost that would feed the veggie crops we plan to grow there. We deepened all our trenches in the, ra in the terraced raised bed area and we also connected the drain pipes from the terrace to the nearby trenches. The sloping open wild grass lawn area was the place that was tricky really because people use this area and I did not want bumps in terms of swales and trenches. But we did not, what we finally did was to make French drains. So we kept the area, you know, the slope of the area intact and people could still use the area without stumbling around. And the water, instead of running off, would infiltrate the soil. In the year 2000, I began the saga of growing this garden. The quest led me from native trees and bird attracting shrubs to tropical climbers and fragrant plants. All these elements are building blocks of an ecological garden habitat. Today, the trees have all grown. We harvest lots of fruit. The native trees are showstoppers, like palash, amaltas, oh, sorry, like palash, amaltas, uh, where am I? Red silk cotton, kumbha, flowers from February to May. The climbers steal the show in winter, 
in the winter months and some of them grow and flower through the year. The garden retains its welcoming, festive and sensory appeal. Volunteer trees have begun to sprung up on their own and as I think about whether to cut a volunteer or to let a jamun or to let it grow, it, began, it begins to fruit. Yes, succession has been accelerated. Yet, we continue to dream up new projects to execute and add appeal. This once degraded piece of land is now thriving and evolving. Soon the canopies will close and we will be native place in the forest. Over the last 15 years, Native Place changed from being a place where paragliders from all over the world come to fly into a paradise for bird watchers and forest bathers looking to be one with nature. I take this opportunity to invite you all to come see for yourself. In the first week of November, we are holding a two-day intro to permaculture course facilitated by Anushree Chitnis. She hasn't come on, up on stage to do this one with me, but she will be doing another of her own, her own projects. Uh, yeah. And uh, this uh, two-day immersion into, eth will, it is a two-day immersion into the ethics and principles of permaculture and a chance to see them being practiced in the native place garden. If you are interested, please do let us know you can get in touch with us via our FB handles, Native Place Kamshet, Astrid Rao, and Anushree Chitnis. Thank you for this opportunity to speak here. It has really taken me down memory lane. Thank you, everybody.